Cash is king for a reason. The more decentralized you are, the more secure you are. The only thing that matters is your scalability and your decentralization. And that is where Omnia comes from. Omnia is a solution that is truly decentralized and does not sacrifice that decentralization in its attempts to achieve massive throughput. People are starting to realize that their conversations aren't as private as they thought they were. Their transactions and who they're paying and what they're buying. Is it possible to have that system without somebody knowing who you're paying and what you're buying? Cash is king for a reason. It is a private system. It is a scalable system, which means that everybody can do a cash transaction at the same time and cash doesn't break. If it were possible to organize the whole world tomorrow at 12 o'clock GMT, to stand next to somebody, I want you to have a, a pound coin in your hand. Take that pound coin and I want you to give it to the person you're standing next to. We've just done five billion transactions in one second. There is no limit to the number of people that could perform that function at the same time. The reason cash works is because the only people involved in that transaction are the two people who are giving each other the money. No one else is involved. Is it possible to come up with a system that does that? And the answer is... We're living in unprecedented times where technology is literally taking on a life of its own. What with the expansion of artificial intelligence, what with the proliferation of technical devices, the entire world is run by electronics and machines are playing a greater and greater part in the world. So we are going to have to come up with some solution which allows all of these machines to talk to each other. Look at the world today. I think it has never been more apparent to people that there are those in charge and there are those who are not in charge. What I mean by that is that it has never been more obvious that the world is run by certain organizations, certain governments, and certain corporations have a lot of power over what you say, what you do, what you can spend your money on. And these things are at the periphery of our vision. These things never used to matter, never used to be something that we thought about it. It just wasn't something that mattered. And in fact, like Trump in America, what's very interesting about him, whether you love him or hate him, yeah, that's irrelevant to this point. He, I remember when he was on Twitter about three or four years ago and, um, and they censored him. And they stopped him from saying, when he was president, five, six, seven years ago. And he was saying stuff and Twitter censored him and didn't allow him to say what he was saying. And everyone was like, this is the president of the United States. How come people can stop him from saying that? And I think that was the first time they realized that there were organizations that could actually prevent you from, we all believe in, many of us believe in freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, these basic rights that we believe everyone should have. And suddenly in front of our eyes, we realized that actually some of those supposed truths were not actually what we thought they were. And so this technology that I and many of us in this space work on is a direct, is a direct result of people realizing that we do need to have the ability to talk to each other without anybody being able to stop us. We do need the ability to be able to send money to each other. You know, these things that we absolutely took for granted 20 years ago, we thought, yes, I can send money to whoever I want. You can't. You know, yes, I can say whatever I want. No, you can't. And the point about that is though, that we want those things because a better world emerges when you have those things. For me, the most exciting thing that's happened in the world for a thousand years yeah, we're literally living through something that has not happened before, that the entire blockchain space, the gift that Satoshi gave us, the crypto world has radically changed everything. The entire world is now very different because of the blockchains. And what this has done for us is that it has allowed us to become less dependent on centralized organizations. What it has done for us, it is you know, it's, I'm going to use the word, it's, it's freedom on a scale which we have 
never even thought of. Well, with regards to the blockchain trilemma, Vitalik came up with this and he said that what you're trying to do is you're trying to balance three separate values, those being security, scalability, and decentralization. And his argument went that when you increase one, you decrease the others. And it's a balancing act between, do I want scale? Do I want security? Do I want decentralization? For me, unfortunately, this misses a crucial point. And it is not a trilemma. It is a dilemma or a bilemma because there is no distinction between security and decentralization. Because when we refer to the security of a blockchain, what we are referring to is its ability to withstand censorship attacks. Not to get too technical, the only reason you would use a blockchain is to prevent other people from stopping you using it. The only known way of doing this is through decentralization. Because if it were possible in a centralized system, we'd have done it by now. If it were possible to come up with censorship resistant systems using centralized structures, we'd have them. We'd have done it by now. But we haven't. And so actually, security and decentralization are the same thing. They are not separate. You cannot have a more secure blockchain that is less decentralized. Yeah? The more decentralized you are, the more secure you are. So those two sides of the triangle are the same. And actually, the only thing that matters is your scalability and your decentralization. And those are the things that blockchains wrestle with. And those are the things that I have been wrestling with for the last five, five, six years. Omnia is a solution that is truly decentralized and does not sacrifice that decentralization in its attempts to achieve massive throughput. This also has many other benefits because privacy is something that is starting to rear its head. People are starting to realize that maybe they're not, their conversations aren't as private as they thought they were. They're starting to realize that their transactions and who they're paying and what they're buying isn't as private as they thought it was. Anybody who's anybody who's used a phone knows that they can be having a conversation about something and then five minutes later they'll see an advert for exactly what they were talking about on their Google feed. You know, or Amazon will be showing them the product that they were just discussing in their WhatsApp group. They're listening. They are, and they wrap this up as security. They say, look, we, we have to listen because we have to know what you're saying. They're saying that it is not your right to have a private conversation. I do not believe that to be the case. It is absolutely, it's not a privilege. It is a right that you should be allowed to have privacy in your life. Without privacy is important for many aspects, for product execution, for entrepreneurship, for, for, the, for you to be able to proceed. It is not the case that everybody should have access to everything all the time. Yeah, it is important that you are able to have a private conversation with someone. This absolutely translates over to the monetary system. And with all the other systems that say, look, we can handle loads of transactions, what you're basically saying is that look, these people over here are going to deal with it. Think of Visa. Yeah, they know everything. They know who you're paying, when you're paying, who's paying what on a global scale. Is it possible to have that system without somebody knowing who you're paying and what you're buying? It is absolutely possible and it's called cash. Yeah, cash, cash is king for a reason. It is a private system. It is a scalable system, which means that everybody can do a cash transaction at the same time and cash doesn't break. You know, we sort of take it for granted now. We always think, oh, there must be some limit to the number of transactions you can do. Cash doesn't have a limit to the number of transactions you can do. Cash doesn't tell anybody else who you're transacting with, when you're transacting with them. It's just it's just a transaction that you do with your peer. You give them the ten pound note, and that transaction has occurred. So when you're when thinking about the scalability feature for Minima, cash was the template which we were trying to emulate. Cash is this thing that you are trying to copy. We want a system, a digital system as good as cash, and I believe Omnia delivers that. So if we can have an example of this, if, you know, when, with regards to transactions per second and what your system can handle, 
if it were possible to organize somehow the whole world and you say to them, look, tomorrow at 12 o'clock GMT, I want you to find someone to stand next to. Okay, and somehow you broadcast this to the entire planet and everybody hears you. And I say, I want you to stand next to somebody. And then I want you to have a, a pound coin in your hand. And then, so there's, let's say there's 10 billion people on the planet. So there's 5 billion pairs of people standing next to each other at 12 o'clock GMT tomorrow. And then at 12 o'clock GMT, I want everybody to take that pound coin and I want you to give it to the person you're standing next to. What has happened is that we've just done 5 billion transactions in one second. 5 billion transactions in one second. There is no limit to the number of people that could perform that function at the same time. Cash doesn't break. There is, you know, there's, there's no system that is a bottleneck to more and more people doing that system. That is a scalable solution. That scales with the number of people that want to use it. When you've got 77 billion devices coming online by 2030, you're going to need a system that can handle 77 billion transactions per second. Now, as much as Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, as, as much as these chains want to say, yeah, we can handle the world's traffic. Can you handle 77 billion transactions a second? Should they all want to do a transaction at the same time? Will your system be able to handle that? I'm not saying they will all want to do it at the same time, but if they wanted to, does your system allow for that possibility? Clearly, any system that involves other people, any system that requires a set of validators, any system that is run by a small cartel of big computers somewhere on the internet and you send them the transactions and they process them, is never going to work. It's just going to be impossible for you to handle that much traffic. So you need a system that doesn't involve anyone else except the people in the transaction. The reason cash works is because the only people involved in that transaction are the two people who are giving each other the money. No one else is involved. So digitally, is it possible to come up with a system that does that? And the answer is yes, it is possible. The closest thing to Omnia currently out there is the Lightning Network. The Bitcoin's Lightning Network is a truly magnificent piece of technology which has this scalability component in that there is no limit to the number of transactions that the Lightning Network can do. There are technical issues with the Lightning Network that I believe stem from the complexity of the technology required to get involved. You want as many people as possible to be able to play with this technology. You want as wide a net of developers and programmers and producers and people to be able to get involved. And the technical barriers currently in place are so great that only a small, a seriously small fraction of a fraction of people can get involved in this technology. Omnia, the technology that Minima uses, is the next version of that. Omnia stands on the shoulders of giants developed by some of the absolute greats in this space. The way Omnia works is that you would require a, an on-chain transaction to leave, to leave the layer one world and go and live in the layer two world. And then once you're in the layer two world, it's all parties, it's all fun and games, and you're just sending money to everybody. And then if you ever wanted to leave that world, you have to do an on-chain transaction. What if I want to do more than that? What if I want to create a smart contract that allows me to buy a house? So it could be a multi-sig between my lawyer and somebody that I've given a deposit to. And when they sign the, the document that does the, the survey on the house, the deposit is automatically given to them. You know, you can, you can smart contract eyes anything. You can use this system on Minima, not just to do money, but to do anything that the smart contracts allow you to do. You could use it to do smart contract back games, poker. You could use it to do legal documents, uh, inheritance, complex situations with multiple parties. All of this can be done over Omnia. And 
that hasn't been done by anyone else. That isn't something that you can currently do anywhere else. In every single blockchain out there, there is this horrible dynamic between those that run the network and those that use the network. There are those that are in charge of validating transactions, propagating them, blah, blah, blah. And there are those of us who use the network. And so if you want to do more transactions, the power required by those that run the network has to go up. Yeah, this is Solana. This is Ethereum with its multiple side chains. Minima doesn't have this. The number of transactions per second you can do over Omnia is not proportional to the number of people who, the power of the people that are running the network. Everybody on the Minima network runs a complete node validating everything. Everybody on the Minima network runs the same code in the same way with the same parameters. Yeah, everybody's running the thing. Everybody's running everything. And it is not a requirement that these devices become more powerful as the number of transactions that are done on Omnia increases. Those two things are not dependent on each other. And that's really special because it means that even today, there could be as many transactions as we want running on the Minima network. We don't need to give you a more powerful device. We don't need there to be a larger cartel, a smaller cartel of really powerful computers running the network for this to work. It works today at scale. Our partnership with ARM is our way of trying to embed Minima in all the devices in the world. Our partnership with ARM, who are, you know, by far the most integrated chip, you know, they run all your phones, they run everything, frankly. And if it were possible to embed a blockchain onto every single device on the edge, that would be very powerful. That would be very useful because then the, uh, the size and resilience of the network would be unbounded where, especially with the M to M economy, the machine to machine economy, we sort of, we think there's always gonna be a human involved. It's like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm using this to pay for this. I'm, I'm paying for that. What about when we're not involved? What about when it's just the machines? What about the M to M economy? What about when machines pay other machines? If you have a warehouse, and you have a sensor in the warehouse that detects whether it's humid. And you have another device in the warehouse that is the Wi-Fi connection. And you have another device in the network that is the fire sensor. Do they all need to have Wi-Fi or can the water sensor and fire sensor pay the Wi-Fi sensor per byte in real time over Omnia when they need to warn someone that something is happening, when they need to gather information or download it? Machines are going to be doing this a thousand times more than we do it. Machines are going to be doing it a thousand times faster than we do it. We're talking a scale at which we cannot comprehend. And you're going to need a system that allows for that. You're going to need a system that allows these machines to get on with whatever it is that they're doing at scale without fear that something is going to break up in the cloud because they're pushing the limits of what is allowable. And Minima is a compact chain, which means that you can embed it on very small devices. Minima is small enough that, especially with the tech that we have nowadays, can run in full on an edge device, which kind of makes it an autonomous unit, which means that it is independent of anyone else, which means that devices will just have it for nothing. It'll cost, you know, once it's embedded on the circuit board, it costs nothing. Everything will have a minimum chip involved. Everything will be able to send value to another device at speed, at scale, whenever it needs to. And the derivative applications of that are so myriad. There are going to be so many things that they do that we can't even think about now because they are allowed to do it, they will find ways to do it, that it's going to blow everyone's mind. And I find that incredibly exciting.